Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 14th. It is a beautiful fall morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's going to be cloudy today but and cool. We're, we're only in the, the mid to high 40s today. Uh, rained yesterday, but uh, this morning the sun was out and it was just a, a glorious fall morning. Kind of kind of mornings I really love. I like fall and I like spring. The rest of the year is great, but fall and spring are my favorites. So, got my olive wood pipe here from uh, my good friend Carl, olive wood piper. And it's got some haunted bookshop in it. And the morning's off to a great start. Uh, already had some Pegasus, had a few cups of coffee. I'm a happy guy. So the main thing I wanted to talk about today is to give you some updates on uh, on the auction on Friday night. Um, as you probably know, if, if you've watched any of my past videos, we held an auction on Friday night uh, during my live stream slot to uh, benefit the family of my friend Justin Aldrich. Uh, Justin was a member of the YTPC. I got to know him on Instagram as a fly tire. Uh, we developed a, a friendship and, and Justin sadly passed away um, at a very early age, back in August of, of uh, this year, and left behind his wife and a large family. Uh, he was about six kids. and. You know, I, I had these pipes that I had made for him, corn cob pipes, and I thought, well, maybe I'll auction them off and we'll raise a couple hundred dollars uh, just to help them out for the holidays. And, you know, that seemed great. But of course, you guys being who you are started to come forward and say, you know, can I add something? Can I add something? And before I knew it, I had, uh, I think there were 14 items that I had to auction off. And then there were an additional three items added during the evening where people started to come in and say, oh, I've got this, can I auction it off? And it, it actually got to a point where I had to say, you know, we couldn't take any more because it was, my show is normally an hour and a half and we were at two and a half hours at that point. But, and folks were there, you know, that, that's the amazing thing. We got close to a hundred. We didn't hit a hundred, but we were close to a hundred as I was watching the, you know, the viewer numbers climb and, you know, just shows incredible support. And even at the end, after two and a half hours, we were still sitting around 70. So that's really impressive. I, I can't believe you guys were, you know, that kind and generous just with your time. On top of that, I need to thank, um, and I, I'm not going to call anyone out because it's not right to do that. Every contribution was, was absolutely uh, important and, and appreciated and, and warmly, uh, warmly heartfelt. So uh, I want to thank everybody that provided items to be, to be auctioned. Uh, it's very, very kind and generous of you all. We had some amazing items. And I'm, again, I'm not going to call anything out. You can go back and watch the, the auction video if you want. At the very beginning, I've got a slideshow of the 14 or so items that I had at the beginning, and then there were several added as, as the night went on. I want to thank everyone that bid, and not just the winning bidders. You know, the guy that starts out with $10 is just as important as the guy that ends up buying the item at $200 or whatever. So everybody that bid and, you know, hoped to win it and didn't and all that, you're all winners, and you, you, all, you all played a really important role in this. And then the donations that came in, both before the auction and after, a large number of donations, and, and they're all greatly appreciated. And finally, just the folks that watched, you know, showing that support, seeing that number of people uh, made me feel good, and I, I think it, it's going to make uh, Justin's family feel good as well. And finally, for all you folks that said you're going to continue to, uh, to pray and think kindly about his family, uh, especially during this, this coming holiday season, I greatly appreciate it. And they, they appreciate it as well. So, how did we do? We did fantastic. Like I said, I thought we were going to raise a couple hundred dollars when I just had these two modified corn cob pipes. 
we actually wound up raising a total of two thousand nine hundred and twenty seven dollars uh, of that let's see two two thousand three hundred and ninety five were in donations and I'm sorry two thousand three hundred and ninety five was from the auction and five hundred and thirty two dollars in donations really remarkable and the reason some of the, the, those numbers are unusual uh, is that there were some donations from overseas and the currency conversion threw a couple of odd numbers in there, but um, just remarkable. Now, 2,927, it's a prime number, but it's not an even number, and I like even number. It, no, it is an even number. <laughs> it's a prime number and an even number, but it's not a round number. Uh, so I went to... Uh, increase that to, to 3,000 just to, to make it a round number. Uh, so I'm going to do that as, as my contribution to the to the effort. So we're going to be sending Justin's wife $3,000 uh, for her to use for the holidays for her and the kids. I got in touch with her yesterday and let her know and uh, her response was first off she was you know surprised she, she was not expecting that much and and uh, because you know, she thought I was just some guy with two corn cob pipes. You know, <laughs> she wasn't. She wasn't expecting that, and she didn't know about the the generosity of the pipe community. And I did tell her that it was the entire community coming out uh, to support this. I told her we had many many items donated and many people bidding. Uh, she she was very grateful. You know, wanted me to offer thanks to everyone uh, on on their behalf. And she said, and this really touched me and I don't know if she meant it to but uh, she said you have no idea how much of a difference this will make so that that's nice that that's really we did something good and we always when we pull together on things like this we always do something good so no surprise there but it is very very appreciated so thank you all for this um, I currently have printed shipping labels for everything that I'm shipping. All of the items that are being shipped by other folks, they have the inf the shipping information and uh, they've you know committed to shipping it out as quickly as possible. I'm going to wait until I have tracking information on everything that's being sent before I hand the money off uh, just to make sure that we're you know everything is, is, is good. Uh, it's not that not a matter of trust, it's just a matter of logistics so we'll be doing that I'm gonna hopefully get to the post office uh, tomorrow with with all these packages if I don't make it tomorrow uh, I'll definitely make it before Wednesday and I will update all the winners with the tracking information as soon as I have it and that's where we are so again, thank you. I can't say it enough. I've said it a lot, I know, but I can't say it enough. Thank you. All right. Um, what else is going on? Well, you know, to be honest, and this isn't a complaint. It's just you guys may not realize it's a lot of work in, in this auction stuff. You know, not... The front end wasn't bad, you know, the front end was just a matter of getting the pictures and stuff and, you know, publicizing what was happening. The, uh, the, the hard work is in organizing all the shipping and, you know, figuring out who gets what and, you know, making sure the money comes in and making sure the right item goes to the right person and all that. And, you know, I had to make a spreadsheet yesterday and I spent a couple hours just getting it organized and then getting the printing, la the, the shipping labels printed and, and all that good stuff. Uh, now I got to start boxing things, and uh, hope I have boxes for everything. I think I do. I've got a fair number of boxes uh, hanging about, so I should be able to get everything boxed up today. I've got the labels printed, and if everything goes well, either I or my darling wife will take it to the post office tomorrow. She doesn't know that yet, but <laughs> we'll we'll get it there one way or the other. So that's been taking up a lot of time. Um, I just, before I started this video, got the last address in and sent the email and everything. So, uh, that's, it's good to have that done. Uh, work, as you know, my, my real job has been a bear lately. 
And that is, I've got a presentation that I have to make on Tuesday that's actually a really important presentation. So I've been spending every spare minute that I have working on that. So I haven't touched sandpaper or anything in about a week. And yeah, it's fine. This happens. It slows me down, but I've got to pay the bills and that's what pays the bills. And I enjoy it. So I'm, I'm lucky to have a job that I that I enjoy it, and it does pay the bills. So I actually have to do some work this afternoon, I'm getting slides prepared for Tuesday. Uh, I've got to meet with some folks that are uh, involved in the presentation, you know, contributors to the work on Monday, tomorrow, and then the presentation happens on Tuesday. And then it's kind of downhill into the holidays, so that's nice. Taking off the week of Thanksgiving, and it looks like my wife is going to be going to Pittsburgh. I'm not. So that's, you know, I, I wish I could. Um, I've just got too much to do, and honestly, I don't want to take the trip again, because uh, I was just there in August. But she's going to go in, have Thanksgiving with her family. I'll be here having Thanksgiving with the dogs. I'm hoping I can get my car repaired. Um, I need a new steering wheel shaft. Um, so when you turn the, the steering wheel, you know, you're just supposed to feel a nice... What I get is a, like, clunk, and then it turns. And uh, that's... They passed inspection with that, but they said, you know, I wouldn't drive too much with it. And, you know, I, I do like local driving, but I don't want to get on a highway and drive it. So I want to go visit my buddy Jack Kurtz. Um, hi, Jack. I want to go visit him that week, and I'm hoping that I can get the car uh, repaired by then. But it's not simple. The guys that I, I normally let um, a little shop here work on the car. It's It's, you know, past warranty now, and no need to take it to the dealer. They can't get the part. I talked to the dealer and the dealer said, well, we don't trust them. We're going to have to do diagnostics and everything. And it's probably going to be a $2,000 job. The shop I'm talking to is saying maybe $500. And, and then they go on to tell me they won't order the part until they do the diagnostics. And the diagnostics are going to cost more than the part. And if I decide to not get the job done by them, I still have to pay the diagnostics. Like this just isn't right you know they're, they're being jerks about it so I'm trying to find the part and if I can find it the guys that uh, normally do the work for me will will happily put it in but uh, it's it's just not easy to find this part it's uh, the steering wheel shaft for a 2010 Hyundai Elantra Touring so if any of you guys have a steering wheel shaft which I know you don't uh, yeah, so that's something I'm going to do after Tuesday. I'm going to start looking for that part in earnest, and uh, hopefully they can quickly put it in once I have it. You know, I like... I'm really torn, because I, I like the Hyundai dealer. I like the guy that sold me the car. I've now bought three cars from him. Uh... Their warranty service is spectacular. Their customer service is okay. I mean, certainly on the selling side, it's fantastic. On the maintenance side, it's a little difficult. You know, the guy that, that I have to deal with is, is a little... Uh, I don't know what the word is. He kind of treats me like I don't know what I'm talking about, and I need to pay attention to him, and he doesn't really care what I think. And that's not a good relationship to have with somebody that's taking care of your car. So when it's time to buy a new car, I'd really like to go there and I'd like to help out this guy who's sold me three cars and has always done me, you know, really, really good by me. But if I have to deal with their service, I don't want to do that. It's a shame how one person and just their attitude can really impact on the, the whole company, you know, the whole organization. There.
Uh, I enjoy this pipe. I don't smoke it as often as I should, but every once in a while it's just it's just nice. It, it smokes burly really well. Um, the, the airway design is fantastic on it. It's, it's a nice looker. Um, I, I gotta admit, I'm a briar snob. You know, I've got one olive wood pipe, I've got one mortar pipe, I've got one meerschaum pipe. I've got multiple corncob pipes, I've got multiple clay pipes, but uh, most of my pipes are briar, and that's what I reach for. You know, when I think I'm gonna go get a pipe, I'm thinking of briar pipe. Now the reasons, so it's it's not that this doesn't smoke well, it, or it's not that I cannot smoke this well. It's just different, you know. So and and that's fine. And if I had five more olive wood olive wood pipes, I'd probably be happy that I had them. Morta. I can say the same thing about Morta, except in my experience with the one Morta pipe I have, it heats up more than Briar. Like in your hand, you, you feel the heat more. So I probably would not buy another Morta pipe. But if one landed in my lap, I wouldn't be disappointed. You know, that's that's what I'm trying to say. I, I don't think I'd invest in another one just because I like Briar and Mort is okay, but it does get a little bit hot. Meerschaum I just don't get, you know, and I know there's guys that love it. I just don't get it. To me, it's like a pipe that never breaks in. So I wouldn't buy another Meerschaum pipe. And corn cobs are utilitarian, and I like having them around. So I'll, I'll and I keep them a long time. You know, I've got cobs that are now more than twelve years old, I think. So if they ever burn out, I'll buy another. And the clay pipes I mostly use for tasting. Um, you know, sometimes tasting blending tobaccos and things like that. They're very clean. They, they give you a very clean flavor. Um, but again, they have the same issues. Meerschaum in that you can't break them in and they get really hot in your hand. So you couldn't hold a clay pipe like this. You've got to, got to do one of these things with them. And, but they're, they're great for tasting tobaccos. But I probably should buy a few more olive wood pipes because I, I really enjoy this. If you're looking for one, Carl goes by Olive Wood Piper on YouTube and Instagram. Great guy, makes a nice pipe. Unbelievably, uh, I want to say cheap, inexpensive. There we go. Uh, really great value for for the for the money. Shouldn't say that. You guys are all going to go buy pipes from Carl. He's going to raise his prices because he realizes that he's giving it away and then I'm not going to be able to get any more. I guess the one thing about olive wood, and I don't know this, I, I'm, I'm just guessing that this is the case, is that because it's not as heat resistant as briar, you have to... Um, you have to make the pipe larger, and um, you know I don't like really big pipes, but uh, this isn't this isn't bad. Um, yeah, I've never seen like a you know little billiard made of olive wood. I'm guessing that's because of the heat resistance. I should ask Carl; he knows a lot about it. Anyway, uh, 8 o'clock coffee. Ah, wonderful. So, last thing I'm going to say about this auction. Y'all did amazing. Um, 
we did a good thing and we've made a family's holiday season brighter. So last time I'll say it, thank you everyone. Thank you on behalf of myself. Thank you on behalf of Justin's family. Um, you have no idea how much this is appreciated. All right, folks, with that, I am going to call this to a close. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.